So, David Harrison of the False Positives, tell us about the band. Tell us who all's in the band. And 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 first of all, thanks for being here. Appreciate it taking time out on a Friday. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, so the False Positives is a project I started about, uh, I guess it's been a couple of years now. Um, uh, I, I had, you know, gotten out of music for a long time to uh, raise a family, you know, mm -hmm. being an adult. <laughs> Uh, but I always, you know, I, you know, I, I love playing guitar. You know, I, I just basically took 20 years to like, you know, do some more homework. Uh, but uh, we, um, I, I, maybe about, uh, like, say maybe 12 or so years ago, um, I'd gotten together with a bass player and a drummer just at my house. We would just, you know, come over, they'd come over once a week and they would just indulge me uh, with every single, you know, obscure cover that I'd always wanted to play <laughs> and hadn't been able to, you know, convince the voodoo dolls to put in a set. Uh, so, and, and, you know, because, and some were just songs that we would never have played live, but I just really wanted to play. So, uh, I, that was Brian Murray, who is the bass player in the, um, in the band. Uh, and, and another gentleman named Jay Rep, who is a fantastic um, musician. Um, and then about six years ago, the Voodoo Dolls had a, had a reunion. It was, uh, it was the first time we'd played together in a long time. And it was just great. It was just great. Back home in Boston, um, at the Middle East downstairs, it was part of... Uh, a radio show called Pipelines, big anniversary, and we uh, um, we had a great time. And I was like, you know, and my guys are older, my my kids were older, getting older. I was like, you know, I think it's time to get the band back together. So <laughs> I, uh, I I I got Brian in, and um, uh, Jay helped us for a little while, while until we found, uh, you know, he, he made it clear he didn't want to go the, go the distance. Uh, we found an uh, an and a great guy named Paco. Paco Vives is uh, a uh, Spanish uh, dude who's here in Rochester uh, with his wife, uh, who's uh, doing something at the university. Found him um, at Brian on Bass, me. And then uh, the latest addition is a gentleman named Don Blair, who's playing keyboards and singing backup vocals. Been a longtime friend, and um, I kind of, and he's got, you know, other, uh, you know, another band with his wife, they're, they're fantastic, called Anonymous Willpower Band. Check it out online. And uh, I'd always hesitated to ask Don uh, because I just knew he was busy. And, you know, I don't like asking questions when I think I'm going to get a no. <laughs> so I, uh, but I did ask if he just wanted to lay some tracks, you know, just lay some tracks on a, on a song that I really heard keys on, really wanted that Hammond B3 sound, you know. Um, Don said, yeah, and Don, then, then, then Don was like, hey, I'm in. <laughs> well, all right, he's in. So the Hammond B3 is so, <clears throat> I mean, to me that transports tracks, but it sounded like, David, you were talking about that, like, that musical relationship that you were able to connect with these guys. And there's also a term called music ma malaria. Have you guys heard this, Craig? Do you know what that means? It means once you play in a band, it may be five years it may be two months you never know when it's going to hit you again you you got to get playing you got to get playing again <laughs> you get that rock and roll relapse yeah <laughs> i like that yeah, term too yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a long haul rock and roll sufferer <laughs> <laughs> aren't we all aren't we all <laughs> so but david uh, I, are you guys, I mean, are you guys like doing any tracks? I know during this time, it's very difficult. Are you doing any tracks digitally? Are you guys writing anything or are you jamming? Are you, do you dare get together and play or what's going on? No, we don't go, we don't dare to get together and play. I'm, yeah. you know, I've, I've stayed safe for a year and I'm not going to blow it now. Um, yeah. Uh, Amen. Amen, brother. We, uh, I do the writing and uh, uh, I record on, my computer and I send them rough mixes and then they send me tracks and I put them back, put them together. So, um, yeah, I mean, in this last year we've released, um, 
gee, I was just kind of going over things. It's, it's got to be like four songs, I think, that we've released in the last year. Um, and they were all put together, you know, virtually with uh, the guys who are sending me their tracks. And then we talk back and forth. And I'm like, hey, you know, I'm hearing this. Or could you try that? And uh, they indulge my uh, <laughs> my scheming and dreaming, and then they uh, they send me my stuff, and I put it together. Yeah. Well, I don't. I think you're being modest because your tracks are excellent. What I've seen, what I've been able to, to see on YouTube, I'm more of a. I need a physical product, you know. I'll turn on YouTube like when I'm just searching for stuff. But uh, Craig turned me on to you guys, and I was just like, oh wow, they're great. Oh, oh, a mutual. Shit. Excuse me. I said it's all Shady's fault. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Shady. <laughs> I just noticed that. That's Craig has put Shady underneath his name instead of Craig here in the garage. Oh, I've got like seven songs on the Bandcamp site. Yeah. So just uh, you know, join me, join me over there, and we'll dance around the camp, Bandcamp fire site, and you can. Uh, I tell you the uh, uh, caveman. That was one I listened to. You like that one? I like that one. The words to it are awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Devo was right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are not men. But you guys... So David uh, went... Oh, oh go, go ahead. ahead. No. Go ahead, Troy. No, yeah. I insist. Go oh. ahead. Seriously. Oh, I'm just going to say, you know, listen to, I've listened to all seven of your songs. Ah. Uh, on there. And uh, you, I've listened to them all a few times. Um, and I hear, uh, I hear the Kinks, the New York Dolls. And and uh, the eyes wide open. I swear it's Elvis Costello. Ah, yes, I heard eyes wide open. Wow, well, that's very kind of you to say. Thank you. Those are uh, those are all bands that I like and singers I like. So you guys have fallen right in there with it. So awesome, thank you. Well, you know, David, do you prefer Dave or David? How do you like to go by? Oh, I don't care. Just don't call me late to dinner. <laughs> okay. here's what i hear now i prepared this a little bit before here's what i hear and i think doug feiger i mean i hear a lot of this in some of your stuff i really do i really do you know it's uh i've been accused of genre jumping right and uh so is neil young you know i hate i hate the word genre right? yes uh yes. you know labels Yes, as, man. It, yeah. Labels, as someone once said, is for soup cans. But uh, uh, <laughs> I just, I just uh, like to play and record what's in my head. So you know, yeah, I'll jump from a power pop thing to like more of a garage thing to more of a I don't know what thing you want to call it. I don't, I don't think of music in those ways. Right. So, um, yeah. I'll never, you know, be able to pass the purity test for, <laughs> uh, you know, you know. <laughs> we don't want to do the cookie cutter stuff anyway. We would rather, I would rather you jump around. You know, yes. It's, it's the whole, my beetle boots are, you know, sharper than your beetle boots. <laughs> thing. And, yeah. and, you know, it's not, that's not my thing. Uh, and it doesn't matter, be, you know, um, because I'm in a position where, you know, it, I'm just doing this for myself. So, uh, sure. you know, it'll just keep doing what I want to do. But David, what you do for yourself connects with a lot of people. I mean, I identified with with the tracks I've heard. I thought they were very authentic. That's a word Craig and I use a lot on oh, the yeah. show. It's real. So appreciate yeah, that. I, I appreciate that. You know, I mean, uh, uh, I try to, uh, you know, I, I, you know, the way I describe the band is deep roots, right? Deep roots in rock and roll, and uh, that, you know, I think that you can hear it when you hear a band. Uh, that's you know new on the radio or whatever, and you're like, oh, those guys really like Blink 182, so that's really cool for them. Right. Uh, it's got like you know, uh, uh, you know, and, and and people like that. But that's but for me, I'd be like, well, where did Blink 182 get influenced by? Uh -huh. Well, they got it by the Ramones. Well, what were the Ramones influenced by? Right. The Ramones were influenced by a lot of things that you know you wouldn't think at first uh, at, at first glance that that's that, that that's in their wheelhouse or Revlon, but you know. It is. So, you know, I've always wanted to, like, dig back into, uh, into yes. the, of, uh, the rock and, uh, <laughs> and then, you know, give it a few decades of, you know, shaking up. And then what comes out is hopefully something that's, you know, unique and authentic. Very cool. Sometimes you got to go down that rabbit hole of rock and roll to find it. So, yeah. Exactly. 
Well, you know, that's why to me, I mean, I jumped I, as a little kid. I, I, I fell in love with the Beatles, as if you can't tell. Um, <laughs> but that led, that led me all exploded all over the place. I went and got into Carl Perkins. Carl Perkins led me to the Sun Records. Sun Records led me to, I mean, just on and on and back and back and back. So I'm with you. I mean, to me, there's just, there's, there's just music. I don't like the genres. I don't like the labels, but I do think that we need to, there needs to be a resurgence of rock and roll on the radio. And that's what Craig and I are trying to do. Right on. Yeah. You know, real rock and roll that grabs you and allows you to, to jump up and, and, you yeah. know, that's me. That's it. Well, that's what, the, you know, and in a lot of ways, we're lucky these days. We have more more choices than ever before, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. I love, uh, you know, the um, Little Stevens Underground Rock and Roll uh, on yeah, Sirius totally. XM 24-7. If you want to hear some real rock and roll, it's right there, you know. Um, whereas, you know, when I was a kid, uh, you had to work a little harder to uh, – <laughs> To find the good stuff, yeah, you know, usually a Saturday night at two in the morning, and <laughs> oh, I had guys. I I'm old enough. I had the little transistor radio with the earpiece. Oh yeah, you know, in this bed. Is, this is my new little transistor radio. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same exact way. Same exact. But you know, but you know, Craig and David, what the other argument to that would be that we're it's narrow casting now. I mean, we could all share that that communal zeitgeist really of oh you know what i heard on the radio you got to check this out now we're all kind of it's harder to reach a broader audience and I, i'm not saying that's a bad or good thing i'm just saying that that's that's the art the counter argument to that well i don't know if i agree with that really because uh of the ubiquity of the internet right so um you, you know the theory of the long tail 8021 huh. well, go ahead and google the long tail and what it is what the idea is that these little niche niche uh, products, right, that maybe would only have found just a few people if it would had to be analog distribution because of digital distribution, find much larger audiences. Mm -hmm. And the long and the 80-20 ratio, I'm probably going to mess it up because it's been a while since I, I read it, but 20% um, 20% of, you know, maybe, you know, a popular offerings, right? Account for maybe 80% of the total industry sales, right? Sure, sure. 80% of those offerings ends up with 20% of the overall industry sales just divided up more. Right. But you can aggregate that now in a way that you couldn't before. Ah, huh, good point. Very good point. You thought you were only going to get a little rock and roll for me tonight, and now look at that. Some deep... <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. It's true. Well, that's what's hanging yeah, out in the garage is all about. That's what we do in the garage. We sit around and we talk and, and enjoy each other's company. Cool. What do you want to know? So as David, long as there's no test right. afterwards, we're good. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> David, we're we're a little bit we're we're kind of gear guys. Are you into gear at all? Uh any certain, you know, instruments? What do you play? What do you usually amp when you go live? What do you play through? Well, you'll you're gonna like this. So this, my friends. Oh, oh, oh sweet. That's sweet. Nice. Can you see the serial number? Probably not. Yes. Wait, wait. Hold it, oh, hold yes. it still. Hold on. For folks that are listening, it's seven. It's a seven. Zero. What is yes. that? Mean? 57. That's right. That's right, yeah. boy. <laughs> my 1957 Les Paul Jr. And still got my Voodoo Dolls pick for good. That's ones. awesome. Um, and this has been this has been my guitar for you know like thirty years. Um, I use this. I for live gigs. I play through a uh, Fender Vibrolux that was completely wiped and resoldered to blackface specs by a really talented, a really talented um, guitar tech. Um, Back in back in Boston, you know, when I used to play with Evan in a band called the Nines. Um, yeah. So I'm partial to P90s. I've got I, uh, I've got another junior. David, hold on a second. I am still overwhelmed by that guitar. I mean, I, I have, I've I've seen those at guitar shows, but I've oh oh my gosh. Now this is this is a uh, 
reissue. This is not an original of a, uh, you know, a, a 50s TV special. But it was, wow. this was probably a, a, probably a 90s reissue. I put, put the Bigsby on. <laughs> yeah, gotta have the Bigsby, man. And uh, I also have another SG that is just a stock uh, 70s SG that I had the P90 put on instead of the humbucker, and I put a Bigsby on that one, too. Um, David, real fast, I mean, origin stories, I've got to hear, hold on, David, where did you find, how did you find that, the Les Paul Jr.? Was that oh, just okay. in, when you were touring, and what, how, how did that come across? Uh, this was in the, the uh, this was in the uh, uh, mid-80s, uh, I was, uh, I was working to get, to, to get the Voodoo Dolls together, I, I had, uh, I, I'd been talking to Evan, uh, Evan Shore, Who's uh, Muck and the Myers? Muck and the Myers, friend of the show, amazing guy. Yeah, um, uh, and Cam Ackland, who was the lead singer in a band called the Prime Movers in Boston. Um, and I and I knew that I had to get them both together. I had to get I had to get them together, and uh, um, I was working towards that. Uh, and I knew that I knew I wanted uh, I knew I wanted you know that that P ninety sound. So I saw uh, an ad in, uh, you know, they used to have classified ads in newspapers. Sure. Right? <laughs> could, uh, actually, have, you know, buy or steal a newspaper and then call people up on a phone that was connected to a wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted like 750 for it. I drove the voodoo van up to some office park in northern, um, northern suburbs of, of Metro Boston. And uh, he was in some office. So I walked in there. He, he had the he had the junior in the original case, and uh, I uh, oh. got it from him on the spot. Got it from him on the spot, and that uh, has been my uh, my my uh, my special guitar ever since. Um, I've had other other nice guitars. I had a, I had a really gorgeous white SG Junior. It was probably like a, I think it was like a '63. Um, they walked away after a show at the Rat one night when I oh. busted uh, the roadies to uh, take care of my gear. Stupid, stupid move that I deserve to have my guitar stolen. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh, too, uh, too ridiculously preoccupied to take care of my own stuff. And uh, um, and I've been, uh, I'm, I'm not a huge gear hound. That's really about it. I, you know, I've just got the, the uh, four electric guitars. I got a Strat copy. I've got a I've got a precision bass copy that I use to uh, do bass tracks. Um, my acoustic that I had out before when we first came on, mm -hmm. uh, looking a little bit like uh, Paul's uh, like John's Epiphone, but it doesn't have the yep. knob on the front. But uh, <laughs> got the same kind of tobacco sunburst. And I thought uh, you know if we went out of things to talk about, I could play you guys some songs. Oh, oh yeah, yeah absolutely. David, real fast though, what tracks that uh, are on Bandcamp? Uh, would show say the Les Paul or the SG. Can you? I mean, can you anything? Any of those highlight them? All of them. Yeah. Okay. All of them. All right. Fantastic. Very cool. Sorry <laughs> to get into Geekland, everybody, and the people that are listening uh, on on our podcast. Uh, you know, that's what we do. We talk about we we we're hanging out in the garage. So. <laughs> So, all right, David. Uh, real fast, I do want to finish up with a couple songs, but it's time to play a quick game of either or. I'm going to show you a couple albums, if you don't mind, if you don't mind playing along, and you just choose off the top of your head which one moves you the most. Are you cool with that? All right, here we go. Here we go. Paul Revere and the Raiders, Spirit of 67, or The Clash, London Calling. And no judgment. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. Well, I'm going to say, yeah, that's tough. That's not even fair. Uh, <laughs> Craig, say, you're in this too, man. I'm going to say London Calling. I'm going to say London Calling right now. But you know, I could change my mind tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. I'm in, a, I'm in a class mood today. You know? Uh, I love Paul Revere and the Rangers. Yeah. Okay. Wayne Fontana and the Mindbenders or Bobby Fuller. Bobby Fuller all day long. Yeah. Yeah, Bobby I agree Fuller with you guys there. Yep. Yep. That's rock and roll. What a let tragic dance, guy. Let I mean, dance, what a let dance, man. Love it. Oh. That's rock and roll. Okay. <clears throat> Aerosmith or Kiss Destroyer? Uh, hmm. uh, 
Uh, man, that's tough having to choose between two cartoon bands. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Enough said. Perfect. Thank <laughs> you. Perfect. Enough said. Enough said. Okay. New Riders of the Purple Sage, the Thanksgiving in New York City, or Ronnie Hawkins. Oh, I think Ronnie Hawkins. Ronnie Hawkins and the Hawks. Yeah. yeah. What do you say, Craig? Oh, yeah, Ronnie Hawkins. Ronnie, all right. I'm going fast here, guys. <laughs> Lucinda Williams, Car Wheels on a Gravel Road, or Bob Seger, Smoking OPS. Oh, I think Lucinda Williams. I agree with you. I mean, this is a this is a fun album. But is this a new one she put out, or is that an older one? For that? So that's an old one. Question, yeah. No? yeah, that's, that's old. Amazing. Traffic. Heaven is in your mind, or the hullabaloos? Traffic. I'll take, I'll take traffic. Me too. I'd go with traffic. And the last two. <laughs> Sorry, last last two. Okay, last two sets. Dueling banjos, Deliverance, or Elton <laughs> John's debut. Oh, Elton John. Elton. Greg? Yeah, I go with Elton John. Probably the only time I'd pick Elton John. So, Jeff Lynn, Armchair Theater, or Temple Sun Structures. Uh, I'll take Jeff Lynn. Yeah, I think so. I would too. The Temples is a good are, are a good band, but that's it's really psych. I mean, it's really heavy duty. You better eat some mushrooms before you listen to it. <laughs> You're going off your record collection, right? Oh, I, all the time. I love. Oh. <laughs> I made up with it. I made up with it. That's half the fun, though, you know. So, David, do you have time to give us a couple tunes? I'd love to. Awesome. Any requests out of uh, the, the band camp songs? Well, whichever one you like to play the most. I guarantee there's one that you're like, that's the one. All right, I'm gonna do you guys a. a, a uh, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna do a song that I haven't released yet, but I'm. Uh, I'm gonna... Oh, awesome! That's very cool. Uh, you heard it here first, folks. You're gonna hear it here first. It's called "Bye Bye Baby." <laughs> solo goes so you guys are gonna help me out a little bit with this and just play one in your head okay yes <laughs> <laughs> sounds good bye 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 baby bye 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 baby bye 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 baby best be leaving i'll be leaving gonna throw it on Yeah, man. Woo! Awesome. That is hooky as Hades. That was that awesome. Maybe my new favorite. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I really like. I, I, Craig and I are both drummers, David. So I mean, I, it was all I could do to not, to not <laughs> jump in there. Well, jump that in. Was there, awesome. Man. <laughs> 
That's it's very cool. The, the latency, you can't play together, but uh, yeah. But go for it. That's so, awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm working on that right now. I've got I've got like three songs that I'm in various states of uh, completion. Um, I'm pretty, you know. I'm pretty slow, <laughs> you know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a paragon of, uh, you know, uh, what do they call it when they're really fast? Uh, but uh, I, I just, uh, you know. And well, I can't wait to hear that one once you get it all oh, well, together. You. Yeah, we'll get. Yeah, we'll get. I want to file because I, I want to file, David, because I would love to add. That is I know you've got uh, amazing numbers, but I would catchy, love to play along song. with that. Very catchy. Well, oh, I'll awesome. put you on the list of backups. How's that? Sound? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I've been on that list most of my life. But that's okay. <laughs> You're a waitlist guy, huh? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Don't call us; yeah. we'll call you. Is what he yeah. means a lot. So, <laughs> hooky, 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 hooky. Love it, love it. Yeah. Uh, closed circuit TV romance. Yeah. Can we hear that one? Sure. <laughs> you notice it or not but there's there's so uh, i just love those i call it beatly there's little beatly things all through that that was amazing thank you <laughs> thank you thank you I mean, well uh, david we've, take, we've taken up enough of your time brother i appreciate you being here i really do appreciate you being on the show that's um, it <laughs> we, no, we keep talking going. we're just starting all we're right <laughs> i'm kidding with you guys we got all night listen i just want to say i really appreciate the uh the support, the kind words, you know, um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm doing this pretty much on my own. You know, we don't have, you know, management or, or label or paid promo or any of that stuff. So I'm talking to guys like you that are just doing it for itself, for its own sake, man, appreciate it. Thank you. Well, we appreciate you. I, we're glad you're out yeah. doing it. Yeah. Yes. And David, we want to celebrate it, man. It's, it's life. It's, it's rock and roll, you know, it's, it's joy. So it's the false positives.bandcamp.com or it's Linktree, the false positives. It's on the fake book, uh, false positive, uh, face, facebook.com false positives band. I think watch out. There's a couple of other false positives out there. You don't want to get tricked by the fake false positive. <laughs> You want the those true false positives. <laughs> That's right. If you just Google, if you just Google false positives in Rochester, uh, you'll get us. Um, uh, we're on Reverb Nation too, so it's all all your favorite uh, Insta whatevers and uh, um, you know, sharing is caring, kids. That's right. Everybody check these guys out. The false positives. All right. Thanks for being on the garage, David. Appreciate Thank you, you being so here. much. Thanks, right. Thanks, Craig. Bye-bye.